Welcome to our SAP Expert Talk from our immersive experience studio in Waldorf, Germany. Today we have a super interesting topic for you. We're going to dig into the mill product and mining industries. And to dig into these fantastic industries with lots of challenges that we're going to talk about, I have three industry experts with me. The first one is Chelsea Ramage. Hello, Chelsea. You are from the US, Hello. joining us via Teams. Thanks for being with us. I have Thank you for Alfred Decker, me. right here from Germany. And we have uh, Andreas Steinwender here as well from the product organization. Big thanks, Guy. Big thanks, Chelsea, for being with me today. We're going to talk about a very interesting topic. And I've heard, of course, like all of us, about mill products a couple of times. I have to be honest with you guys, I'm not sure I completely get what's behind a mill product and the mining <laughs> yeah. Mining is obviously a bit clearer. Um, can you allude a little bit? What does that mean exactly? What kind of customer can we find there behind mill product and mining industries? Yeah, I, I have to admit the term mill products is not widely understood. Um, let me explain a little bit on this. Uh, I think at the moment we have an industry go to market by 26 industries in SAP, mm -hmm. and mill products and mining is one of these. Mm -hmm. And mill products and mining is a, a conglomerate or a collection of different industries. Uh, among those, metals, paper, mm -hmm. packaging, textiles, but also a number of building materials uh, industries like uh, you know cement, tiles, uh, concrete, and so on. And uh, well, the immediate question usually comes with what do these industries have in common? And I must say, they have surprisingly a lot of things in common. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all B2B. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh, often a very asset intensive industry. It's commodity products. And it often means very energy intensive processes. Mm -hmm. And all of these aspects lead to very common requirements towards a cloud ERP. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is interesting. So one out of 26 industries at ACP, but behind this one, many flavors or many variants with some commonalities. So are you saying that they are sharing the same IT requirements? Yes, to a large extent. Uh, the, the same is, of course, a stretch, but yes, absolutely. Let me pick or let me describe a little example process that we may also use as a backbone during our further discussion to describe what I mean. Let's pick something that is pretty commonly seen across manufacturing industries. You know, something like there's a sales order that comes in, you have to understand what material are you talking about, then you want to know cost and then prices that you can ask for one day the stuff gets produced and later on someone does analytics and wants to understand how well did we do as it was it profitable or whatever so when i look at this process there are some very particular steps there's something that is common for these set of industries but also kind of particular and that is you need to describe the product through additional characteristics mm -hmm. to really understand what you're talking about mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. uh, if you order a sheet of steel or paper you want to know is that coded or not how wide how long is it supposed to be so there are multiple characteristics that are required that can kick in later on when it comes to costing pricing and planning yeah? so it, they're used along all the process and that's quite different to for example um, discrete manufacturing because in assembly like if you configure a car you would uh, uh, choose a characteristic and will just add a feature to the finished product but mill products is totally different mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. interesting so it's one industry out of 26 that hides kind of different flavors and variants uh, different uh, different needs obviously uh, simple questions maybe to, to you Andreas can ACP s cloud public edition handle all those flavors and variants? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can answer that. Yes, w we can. So um, especially what, what Alfred uh, talked about, these characteristics, uh, SAP S4HANA Cloud Public Edition works with uh, supports characteristic-based products, which includes the mentioned characteristics. So if we look at an example here, um, and we maybe um, see um, and scenario where a user wants to create a sales order um, for, for when a customer orders something. Um, he is in the sales order entry screen and he enters a material and the quantity that the customer wants, wants to have. And then automatically the variant configuration comes up. So the, 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 the user can 
configure the product, which means he selects he or she selects the, the characteristics that the customer wants to order. And as Alfred described here on the screen, you see also coating, crate, but also later on dimensions like length and width that are um, selected. And those characteristics doesn't, that don't stay in the sales process. So they, give, they are passed along to purchasing, to production, and so on. And we can um, see that they are used in the whole end-to-end -end process along order to cash, plan to fulfill. And this helps, uh, so, so the variant configuration really helps our customers to sell and produce complex products. Okay, so the different variation that the customer needs can be built along existing end-to-end -end processes or activated along end-to-end mm -hmm. -end processes in, in the product. Did I get it right? Yeah, sounds good. good. <laughs> uh, so we talk about the industry, we talk a bit about products, variability. Now I'd like to uh, ask a question to you, Chelsea. Uh, I'd like to talk about customers. Uh, how are customers using this already? Sure, so I'll give you an example of a customer who is using it. Um, Again, we do have a variety of industries, but there is an Australian glass and plastic bottle manufacturer who uses advanced variant configuration to track their product inventories across units within Europe. Okay, so you're saying that perfume, perfume bottles are also meal products? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, packaging is not only paper and carton. Packaging can be also made from plastics or glass or metals. Think of cans, mm -hmm. yeah? and all of these are part of the mill parts family. Okay, okay. So Chelsea, what further similarities uh, between these industries are worth being mentioned? Sure. So as Alfred touched a little bit on it earlier, the majority of the goods within the mill products and mining industries are commodities, which means that they have little differentiation between each other and they have a lack of established brand within the market because of this. So their competitors can easily go to, I mean, their, their customers can easily go to a competitor to buy the same product, which leads to price erosion. And as a manufacturer adds this to the new um, challenge of rising costs and um, for energy and transportation, margins are becoming even more under pressure, which makes cost controlling really important for them. So while um, we touched a little bit on sales orders earlier, again, for example, there are some important capabilities that can be highlighted there. So at a point of a sales, at the point of sales, a user, for example, the client manager, they can assess the margin for potential opportunity, which in return helps that company be more mindful about maintaining their margins. So this must be utterly important to the client base, I assume. Um, now another topic, visibility in operation. Today, this is a must have. And understanding how a company operates and having one single source of truth is absolutely key to being a flexible enterprise and being able to react to certain changes in a very volatile market. I can only second that. I mean, obviously you can always open a separate report and gather some information, but that's why our customers appreciate embedded analytics mm -hmm. in the transaction. I mean, this means really information at your fingertips that can lead to actionable insights. Mm -hmm. Right, and these, these customers, they also want to know what their bottom line is, what their top line is, and what their green line is. So when they do have that real-time view into their operations, it's a game changer for them. And many of the users of our cloud ERP they're considered generalists who are using many different transactions versus a larger company who have the resources to have specialist teams who focus on just a narrow piece of the end-to-end -end process, which means overall for these mid-market companies, the system needs to be intuitive and clear. Exactly, the, the information needs to be clear and organized and that is where our user interface comes in. And also functionality like Alfred already mentioned, right, embedded analytics. Um, so with that, we can create analytical dashboards um, according to the, uh, to the user's needs. This supports then his or her decision processes. Um, so when we look at the system, and um, just to give an example here, we, can, uh, we have an analytical dashboards, a dashboard where we um, see how, many, um, how much quantity we sold 
from uh, certain products. And not only products, but also the variant configuration that we configured earlier in the sales order. So which characteristics are sold most, with our which are most profitable? And we can even drill down to a sales order level to get here the best information and leverage the dis this for the decision processes, such as when we want to optimize our product portfolio. And this gives us real-time insights in the actual data and supports our users best. OK, thanks, um, and Andreas. I have um, a question back to a point that Chelsea just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she compared in, in in this industry, users that are generalists that have to know how to use a lot of applications across end-to-end -end processes versus the specialist that goes deep into one or two. Um, that sounds complex, you know, from a, an end-user mm -hmm. perspective. How is uh, the system helping those users manage the complexity with being, uh, you know, cross end-to-end -end processes? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are different ways supporting them, but let me give you one example. So in the area of materials requirements planning, a user can schedule multiple MRPs a day, uh, do that automatically or uh, manually. And um, we have a functionality called uh, predictive MRP, which helps users uh, detecting issues and points them directly to solutions, how they can solve these issues. Uh, and if a user now in the system accesses one of these mm -hmm. uh, predictive MRP simulations, um, he directly sees which requirements are not covered today with the current uh, production plan. Requirements could be uh, sales orders or planned independent requirements. And um, not only does the system um, leads him to, to the requirements that are not covered, uh, the system also suggests options how the situation can be resolved. And the user can directly simulate what impact such a solution has, and he can save it, go for it, or if it's not, if he's not convinced, he can choose another one and simulate that. Mm -hmm. And this is what we call actionable intelligence, which uh, means that the system automatically provides information um, that it can be acted on by the user immediately. Okay. That saves time. And especially coming back to your questions, as especially for generalist users, this is very important because they have very different areas that they look at and they can't go deep into, into every of those units. So these um, um, suggestions of the system really help them. Okay, understand. That sounds very valuable for the end users. Now, if you put this discussion in the larger context of SAP's go-to-market, aiming at um, you know, enabling uh, smaller companies, SMB companies, uh, versus large enterprise with, with cloud ERP. Mm -hmm. User productivity is, I would say, even more important, especially for those generalists. Um, how can cloud ERP help them concretely? Sure. So simply automation. So we have several customers who are using automation. And instead of them working on time intensive and manual data entry processes, the system can quickly scan and pick up data from incoming customer PDFs and extract the required information to book orders directly within the system. And this is just one scenario of many where SAP build process automation can be used. And it, you know, to take note, it's quite simple to set up. I really like your example, Chelsea, because that's exactly where we have a demo for. <laughs> Um, and uh, now we, we, not, uh, we don't start at the S4HANA cloud uh, public edition system, but we start at Outlook where, as you already mentioned, the mails come in and the customer orders come in with the PDFs and our users can select the PDFs um, and directly load them up into the system. And what happens in the background is that the system generates a customer order for it. Um, the users can obviously look at it or, or do some manual checks, but most of the work is already done. And um, this is only one scenario where this intelligent processes help us save time. Mm -hmm. um, there are also other scenarios um, within um, process automation, but we also have scenarios around artificial intelligence or machine learning. But the key to all of these processes is to help the user um, in the best way and support their daily tasks. Thanks a lot, Andreas. This is another great demo. <laughs> I love this innovation. I'm sure it's going to help many, many customers. 
But if I get it right, all that we've discussed so far is based on SAP standard best practices, uh, the, the scope item, as we, as we call them. And of course, every customer, especially uh, with the variation that you guys mentioned, probably have some unique things to, 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 to be customized. I don't know if we use that word in the cloud, but you know what I mean. Um, because their process are simply different, right, from customer to the next. Um, can you allude on the extensibility options? I don't know, the side-by-side uh, -side extensibility or the in-app extensibilities or whatever is possible you know, mm -hmm. for the customers of yeah. those industries. Yeah. 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 yeah, as you already mentioned, we have uh, different things that, that uh, how customers could extend their system, uh, starting with side-by-side -side extensibility, uh, so building an application on our SAP BTP business technology platform and then integrated to S4HANA cloud um, and back. Um, but we also have inside of our ERP, we also have developer in extensibility where developer could also develop some logic in here. But what's also for, for maybe little changes very interesting is what you already mentioned, in-app extensibility. Um, in-app extensibility helps to, to change the existing user interfaces to a degree where it really supports the user experience. And this um, is really helpful for, for lots of our users. Um, one example would be analytics where um, a user could enhance dashboards um, of the embedded analytics that we previously um, saw. But uh, to give you an impression, I also want to um, show you a little demo here of a very industry relevant functionality, which is batch management. So um, batches um, describe the stock or a subset of a stock um, for certain customers or, part, uh, or, or products with Unix unique specifications so that you can reserve them or later on just find them in the stock. And the extension of the Manage Batches app, which um, is an app where you can basically find those batches later on, um, is an extension to the app user interface where you can display and filter for characteristics. And so in our example, um, we have now an app that that user can customize to his own needs. Um, and you see the characteristics that we worked on earlier. So you have coaching and create again, because it's also um, important here. And you can filter and display um, them in the app. And the important takeaway is that our users can flexibly adapt to the situation that are they are in and just adapt the app as they need it. Yeah. I, I would like to add a little bit on this because I, I love that you elaborated on, on you know, in-app extensibility and you already mentioned the platform that we have, the business transformation platform. But it's not only that customers or even partners can, um, uh, within a project can add additional functionality, but there's also ready to consume content mm -hmm. that was built by both SAP and partners. Mm -hmm. They, I think the go-to-market term is industry cloud, but in the end, it's apps which are offered on the SAP platform that can complement the offering of uh, S4HANA cloud ERP. Mm -hmm. And this is to cater the needs of, well, often particular operational processes of the milk products industries. Yeah. And with this, there is, uh, there is really, you, you don't have to develop that during your own project, but there is ready to consume content that is, for example, offered by partners. And to find this, there is SAP store. You, I think we have an example prepared here. So you can enter the SAP store. You can search for industries or for certain processes or even partner names. And the example that we picked here is uh, a company called Team Beta. And uh, they offer you a little app that you can run on your iPhone, for example. You can take a photo of a wood pile, and then it would tell you, hey, these are X amount of wood logs with a certain volume. And this can then be, for example, posted goods received in SAP automatically. And this is just one example for a little app that is available at your fingertips. You can consume that. But of course, there are many more. Plus, you can develop your own. Yeah. So that's the idea of okay. this concept. Okay, great. Thanks for mentioning the complementarity between the partner solutions and the, the SAP solution. I think this helps understand the, the big picture and the potential for the partner ecosystem, of course, yeah. to, to contribute to a joint success. Um, now I think I have um, a, a question to you, Chelsea. Um, because we talk about users, product, system, etc. Um, I'd like two questions on business benefits or payback you know, from all the customers who have invested 
uh, in SAP Cloud ERP. Can you mention that? Sure. So I'll give you three different uh, customers who are manufacturing different products with three different benefits. So mm -hmm. first, we have a customer who manufactures metals and plastic faucets and valves, and they've doubled their output with the same staff after implementation. We have a polymer-based product manufacturer who's leveraged process automation to transform an entire day work into a two-minute automation. And we have a brass processing manufacturer who's harmonized their management reporting for real-time information to reduce their inventory. And these are just three of many more examples that we have uh, benefits that customers have gained using a cloud ERP. This is really, really impressive. Big thanks for mentioning those three examples, Chelsea. And this, unfortunately, already brings us to the end of this expert talk. So first of all, uh, high five team. High five with you, Chelsea. Here as well, <laughs> and here too. Um, Chelsea, Andreas, Alfred, it was a pleasure to run this expert talk um, with you today. I think it was super interesting for our audience. Now, looking at you, dear audience, big thanks for spending this uh, couple minutes with us. We hope you like this expert talk as much as I enjoyed it. If it's the case, please give us a like, please share it with your very own network. And of course, as always, we would like to hear from you. So please write to us via the email inside s4 at sap.com to provide additional comments on this expert talk, but as well to make some suggestions about which topics are of your interest where you see this is a great platform to dig into today's challenges and how SAP solution, especially in the public cloud, can help solve all of those challenges. Big thanks for being with us and looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.